It all kind of started uh, Tuesday afternoon. On Monday, we had beautiful weather. It was 55 degrees, it was nice. And we thought, how, how can we possibly have a blizzard? It's so nice out. But they were forecasting, it's, you guys are just on, you're kind of eye of the storm. It's gonna come around, it's gonna hit you. Well, by eight o'clock Wednesday night, it was terrible. So at midnight, uh, we went out in pairs, two guys to a ranger. We got lost three times getting up to the cattle. So my one son, Cooper, he got out and he walked about 10 feet with a powerful spotlight and I couldn't see him anymore. I thought, oh my God, he, he shouldn't be out there. And I said, well, he's smart enough that he, he won't cross the corral. He'll follow the corral around until he finds me. And so about 15, 20 minutes later, he comes back to the ranger and he said, you know, I, I walked to the cattle, but I, I can't see anything. I said, these cows are dropping calves and they're not even lying down. And he said, it's a mess. Wednesday night was a tough night for everybody. We all kind of didn't really sleep because we knew we were losing calves and um, nothing we could do about it. It was probably the most challenging week of cattle that, I, that I've ever seen. My name's Clark Coleman. I farm and ranch in the Baldwin area, which is about uh, 20 miles north of Bismarck. Uh, we uh, calve out about five to 600 head of cows and we farm about 8,000 acres. And I farm with my brother, Kurt. You know, we had to make the decision, you know, are, are we going to stay on the farm or are we going to find other things to do? Well, that was in the early 80s. If anyone remembers the 80s, those were tough, tough years. And we decided, you know, uh, if we're going to save the farm, we we're going to have to stay at the farm. And so Kurt and I both came back to the farm and uh, we figured it out that uh, we worked on the farm for about 23 years before we kind of dug our way out of that hole. At that time, we were farming about five, 600 acres, and we had about probably 200 head of cows. And so we've, we've grown it from there to where we are today. And I have two sons that are just graduating from NDSU, and they're coming back to the farm. They will be the fifth generation on the farm, so we're pretty proud of that, trying to keep the legacy going. What probably uh, distinguishes us from a lot of the other farmers and ranchers in the area is uh, we are so diversified. Not very many people around here have cattle, at least not in the numbers we do. We've been no-till for pushing 30 years now, and uh, uh, probably we're the first guys in this area that was doing the no-till corn. I've done a lot of different things with ADM, and uh, not all of it has been successful, but a lot of it has been very successful. It's taught me a lot of lessons on how to do different things. ADM's been a front runner for us. You know, we, we market all our soybeans through the ADM plant up north here, up at Hensler, uh, run a lot of our wheat through that facility. I've uh, sold a lot of canola to the ADM plant up at Velva. Market uh, virtually for you know, probably going on 15 years now, all my sunflowers through Guy and ADM and Enderlin. I mean, you take care of me and I'll be very, very loyal. And that's what's happened with ADM. They've taken care of me. When things aren't quite right, they make it right and uh, they'll bend over backwards to make it right. It'll, it'll be fun to get, get a new crop growing, but now with this moisture, if we get that into rain this weekend, like they're talking about, uh, hey man, it's game on. You know, we're, we're gonna go for it. We're gonna get the biggest crop we can. These commodity prices, we're looking forward to a really, a really good year, you know, if we can just get, get, just get the crop in the bin. So, yeah, looking forward to the, to the growing season, so.